What's going on, everybody? My name is C4. Welcome back to the channel. And today we're here for episode three of our College Football 25 Offensive Coordinator Asterisk Dynasty Mo. As we have completed our second full season as the Offensive Coordinator of West Kentucky. As you can tell by our record, pretty good. We went 12-2. and We finished the 18th ranked team in the nation, which is all personal best for the Hilltoppers. We even made the College Football Playoff. Somehow. And we appreciate an invite to the dance. However, it was a, uh, you know, it's one of those things when you look at fighting, there's a reason why there's weight classes. We weren't quite equipped to compete with the Penn States of the world. But what we did do was make our mark on college football because offensively, we played really, really well. That is what we were in control. Honestly, we played great on both sides of the football. This was an outstanding team. But we had at a Velt camp, the gigantic 6'6", 235, signal call from Bowling Green, Kentucky. We got him 36 touchdowns to 10 interceptions on 3,200 yards. We had a limited but effective rushing attack for a guy that could not show up to picture day. And we were able to really just make it work with no premier receivers. With all due respect, Helms at 87 is, you know, one of the better tight ends in college football. But... None of our receivers are really world beaters, and we were able to have a very efficient offense. So after two years at West Kentucky, the question now becomes, is it time to move on? Is it time to upgrade? There's a reason why we're now level 20 as a coach. We have been investing in the recruiting side. We've already kind of maxed out the offensive buffs that you can gain as a coach in college football. And I started working on recruiting, and you don't start working on recruiting if the plan is it eventually to become a head coach. And we got two head coach offers here, one from Western Michigan and one from Colorado State. In the last episode, we did finish by previewing the rosters. And without going into too much detail, yeah, Western Michigan is very much 76, whereas Colorado State is closer to an 80 overall. There is a much more talented roster in Colorado State. And I think it's also fair to say there's much more upside by taking the job here at Colorado State. I thought, personally, we may get a bigger school offensive coordinator position offer, which is what I would say I'm still a little early on becoming a head coach. I think another year with an upgrade at a bigger school for an offensive coordinator where I can take, let's be optimistic, here we're level 20. We could probably get to 23, 25 another year as an offensive coordinator and being able to funnel all those points in to recruiter, I think that would be the perfect situation. So that when I do become a head coach, our recruiting is where we want it to be. Just you know, UNLV and San Diego State are not those upgrades that I'm looking for. I mean, at this point, Colorado State, the head coaching job is probably better than those two. What I didn't do in the last episode was look at overall what are all the jobs that are open. And, um, you know, from a head coach standpoint, from an offensive coordinator standpoint, like what jobs... If I got Utah's offensive coordinator job, if I got Oklahoma State or Stanford, would I choose that, Arizona State as well, over the head coach job at Colorado State? I think Utah would be a maybe, honestly. If we got that Utah OC job, I might delay the inevitable. If we got that Oklahoma State OC job, maybe I'd delay the inevitable. You look at all the head coaching openings. We got Colorado State. That's our best one. Any of these two I think we should be in line with? I mean, obviously, Colorado State stacks up pretty well. TCU, Oklahoma State, Georgia Tech, Arizona. I think that would probably be the dream. If I could look at all these schools, all these openings, thrown in with the ones that we got from Western Michigan and Colorado State, I think Arizona State would be the, the most realistic fit. I understand why Oklahoma State wouldn't have interest in Western Kentucky's offensive coordinator. I get that with TCU. I get that with Stanford. I get that with Georgia Tech. But I think Arizona State, I mean, come on, bring me to the party school, baby. Now, there is other windows that you will get offered jobs. We could simulate a week, and maybe these are different. But also, maybe these get filled, and we're stuck coming back to West Kentucky for another year. So the fact that I, you know, had a conversation with the Williams family. And there's uh, a lot to like from a Canadian standpoint of going to Colorado, if you know what I mean. If you know what I mean. They got great 
healthy food options. Big salad bars in Colorado State. So it is with this. After an out or down year. After a down year. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's been eight years since Colorado State has had a winning season. 13 years since they went and won a bowl game. How did they win a bowl game at four and eight? But as you can see, they've never been good. Maybe 20, you know, right there. 2012, 2013, 2014, they're all right. And in the state of Colorado, it's all prime time. It's all coach prime. It's all the buffs. Shador Sanders, Travis Hunter. I want to compete against that. And we are going to compete against that. Every week I simulate, I do kind of keep tabs on the head coach. Just, you know, you know why not? Window shop and leave out any window for regret. The head coach left Western Kentucky. So it's not just us. It's all Western Kentucky getting absolutely rated. It'll be interesting to see where he actually signed on. Would I have taken the head coaching job at Western Kentucky? Now that would have been... No, if we waited out, that, that definitely would have been 100% an offer that would have opened up. Because if it was inevitable that the head coach of Westkey was going to bounce, would we step in and become... But also, I don't know, maybe something fresh. We got Texas State, Nevada, ranked Marshall. I don't know if we get that Buffalo, Louisiana Tech. I'm not going to lie to these schools. I would still go Colorado State. So that is now time to hire our staff. And we're going to start here. We got Zach Mitchell, the former head coach of San Jose State. Now, you got some head coaching, you know, it is, you know, it's unlikely. But we're going to swing for the fences there. And on the defensive side of the ball, you know, you all, put it this way, it's one of those gambles that you want to take a swing that these guys aren't all going to become head coaches. So, motivator, tactician on Shifano. Kenyon Johnson, 4-2-5. I mean, it's all like also what defense we want to run. I'm fine running the 4-2-5. Pretty modern. Dombrowski. Got motivator and tactic. I'd love to see someone that comes with some recruiting, to be honest with you. As a tiebreaker. Motivator, tactician on Edwin Casey. And then we got Earl Isaac. So it's the same kind of deal. Um, I think in this scenario, we just go with the... Just out of curiosity, what do you got, Center Storm? So it's, oh, he does have recruiting. But he's also by far the least... Uh, can I offer him? I mean, why is my webcam blocking it? You know what? I'm gonna, Because he has recruiting, I'm going to offer it to him. There we go. Center Storm at DC. We're going to try and get level 32 Zach Mitchell as OC. All right, so we got Center Storm as our DC. However, Ty Davidson... We went with uh, kind of who was left, but for a secondary option, even though I didn't 100% get to control, uh, he does have recruiter and would have been uh, would have been who I pivoted. So we're getting Toledo's old offensive coordinator, and we're getting a straight up off the street defensive coordinator. So in my mind, let's just act like Joe Setterstorm was like a positional coach at West Kentucky from that. Epic Western Kentucky defense last year. So now the building here at Colorado State. Chapter 2 of the Cheeto Williams coaching dynasty is here. Our first head coaching job. And look at what we're walking into. We knew we had a talented quarterback. Statistically, though, a lot of, you know, that's what we were still the offense. We're still the offensive coordinator. And we're going to have to find a way to not only hopefully keep him out of the portal, but 27 touchdowns for We can work with that. I think that, and you look at the yardage. There is plenty of room for growth for him to continue to pop off. Run game, non-existent. Not worried about that. It's kind of an issue across the board. Uh, as far as, you know, big-time receivers, I love seeing a freshman here, Landon Bell, with 600 yards and six touchdowns. I love seeing the sophomore, LaVon Brown, with 600 yards, eight touchdowns. I love seeing the other sophomore. Like, this is... And this was a big reason why I chose this team over Western Michigan. If Western Michigan had a worse roster, but they had a lot of underclassmen that had room to grow and higher ceilings, that might have made that project a lot more interesting. But the fact that we had a better roster, better facilities in Colorado State, we can go head-to-head -head with Dion. 
whenever we want. They can you know, get that little battle, that little rivalry going. But the biggest decision was the fact that we got sophomores, freshmen, most of our best players, 85% of them, are underclassmen that will return. They're not seniors like they were at Western Michigan. Uh, defensively, even though we're not controlling it, again, leading tackler, sophomore. Love to see that. Leading sack getter, sophomore, sophomore in Powell and Lurch. Uh, leading ball hawk, junior, underclassman. We got, those are actually terrible numbers. Not even going to try to flex on that. But technically, everyone that got a turnover, even though Dubose could be leaning towards the portal, should be here. Because even though we are and have only ever focused on the offense, and even though we are still going to just control and call the offense, we would have oversight of the entirety of the team. And we gotta, we gotta, we gotta turn this, turn this around. Two and ten, not good enough from Colorado State. As you look at the national championship game, twenty-four twenty-one, it goes to Penn State. So hey, at least we could say as we leave, leave Western Kentucky, we lost to the eventual champion. We lost to the best team in the nation. Good God. <laughs> good God. Uh, this is not good. Well, we're coming into a terrible situation. This is the big one. Braxton Myers. Extremely low. Okay, great. He's gone. We only have four persuasion chances. So I almost feel like we should try and keep some of the more realistic ones here. There we go. We got rushing. 69 freshmen. That's a decent rating. We have Mae at safety. Convince him, the freshman. Junior, sophomore. Okay, we got to swing on some of these sophomores here. We got Vincent and oh, Jeremiah Moses. Very low. Okay, we'll go Agu, the pass rusher. Hell yeah! Welcome back. Not bad. Three of four. Two of them were low. Convinced. I, I'm, we're salesmen. We had obviously no one going to the draft of a terrible roster, but I do want to follow up on some of our Wesky players as we send Stout and River Helms to the NFL. So Helms, we get, you know, that goes on our resume. We put him there. Let's take a look at our roster very, very quickly from the follow-up from the transfer portal just to get an idea you know, when we get a role of our transport, what we're about to see. Like, what position do we need to maximize? What I can only imagine are limited hours. As this program actually falls from a two-star prestige down to a one-and-a-half star. I feel good about our quarterback room. Nicolosi, Fowler Nicolosi is solid. And the freshman, Zach Ivey, has a lot of traits with the speed and arm that I think, you know, we feel good about. Starter, developmental guy. Running back room. Not too bad. Henderson, a lot of speed. I think we can use that and utilize that. Wide receiver room, it is a youthful group. Sophomore, freshman, sophomore, sophomore, freshman, 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 freshman. And we got some speed. Malik Avant, Gbule, Pearson, Bell, and Brown. So that's not a big concern there. Maybe tight end. Offensive line, we got 81, 76, 75. Like all these guys are going to get a lot better during training camp. A tackle, right tackle is definitely a little concerning. Defensively, you know, we did lose a little bit, so a pass rusher would be nice. Interior, the defensive line would be nice. Linebacking core, could, sure, maybe. Secondary, we did lose. Our best player to the portal was a corner, so it would be good to recoup one of those as well. But, I mean, ultimately, I'm looking through this. It's great roster to have going into an offseason where I'm not really going to have any control because I have no control over the incoming recruiting class. I have no control who's going to be available on the open market here in the transport because the team's ratings are so low. So if it doesn't go our way and our recruiting class is butt cheeks and we don't get anything in the portal, I think this roster is still in a really, really good spot for year one of our head coaching journey. All right, so look at the church portal. I knew it was not going to be great. This is about as expected. So we're going to go after a couple of the three stars. Not all of them, and I'll explain why in just one second. But we're going to go after the three-star uh, Dylan Lee at linebacker out of San Jose State. The th uh, three-star linebacker Tuioti from BYU. And the three-star pass rusher Grant Buckley, uh, the sophomore from UCLA. I'm not going to max it all up because we do have some carryover from the previous head coach's recruiting classes. Looking at it right now, you know. It's not the best. Three stars and a couple twos. But there still were a lot of three stars that we are in contention for. And I kind of want to go chase after these guys. I think a lot of them are going to offer a little bit more than the transfer portal. And there's only so many hours. You only have 600 total hours. So we are going to try to make the most 
see just how many three stars we can get to buy into the new project here at Colorado State. All right, we get our first recruit, Kalen Baker, three-star corner out of Niceville, Florida. Nice. Continue that with Matthew Villan from Florida, Billy Ballware from New Jersey. And we're generally keeping most of these guys attached to that line. We finish up with landing at running back Camacho from Texas, Bouchelle, offensive lineman from Colorado. That is it. Oh, no. Not a great roll. We close out like half our first recruiting class as the 63rd school in the nation. I would say for context, West Kentucky, 70th. So that's better. And I guess Western Michigan, the other school we could have went to, went 82nd. So by comparison, not bad. Could have been worse. Now let's peek under the hood at the players that were mostly not my recruiting class to see if we got any good roles of Dev Trait. I have them ranked by order of their national ranking. So we start with the two stars, Impact two star, and Rugamba, the wide receiver, 5'9", Impact on Megat, Ballware, the pass rusher, Impact, Normal on Crook, the backup quarterback, Normal on Hacker, Watford Normal, Normal on Watkins, Kearns, Impact, not bad, 1200th in the nation on the defensive line, which is a spot we want to get better. But look at Vila, star dev, he is Juco. So we're not going to get a full four out of him, but that is a very nice get for the program. Uh, Bouchelle, normal. Impact dev on Darren Wood, the wide receiver. Kalen Baker gets elite dev. The 6-2. Top 1,000 recruit. That is what we needed. Especially losing a top corner to the transfer portal. Getting one with that much upside. It's going to be very tough for me. Not like unless he's like a 65 to get him on the field year one in elite in our first recruiting class. And that was me. I got that one over the line. Impact on Lenzel Henson, the wide receiver. Camacho, normal dev. Heaney, impact dev. 790 in the nation. Lincoln at running back, potentially. Uh, but, you know, I think linebacker is another position he's being considered at. Impact dev. And then Snow, our highest rated player, 569. The center gets a star dev. So, all in all, I think pretty good. I will say now at position changes, we have a, an interesting decision. I, I don't think we are because we're so limited right now at wide receiver and he popped off. But Landon Bell is a 74, 75, whatever you want to break it down wide receiver. But then as soon as I was kind of looking at these, like 86 carry, huh? He would jump up to an 83 running back. I think there's more value for him here at wide receiver, but that'll be something to keep an eye on maybe next year, especially if we can build up the health of our wide receiver room this year. In this recruiting class, we got someone that we could potentially be a game changer at running back on the roster. So look at our first training camp coming out of it. Not much development out of the starter, but Zach Ivey, I'm going to be honest. He's the guy that's kind of caught our eye a little bit in terms of pipeline. Only a normal dev trait, but for a freshman, 93 throw power. He also is ridiculously fat. I mean, it'll be something to keep an eye on. But I, I do wish we had a little bit more development out of Fowler and Nikosi. But Henderson popped off. He's now up to an 84 overall. The show's going to run through the electrifying Damian Henderson. I think we're going to have plenty of rush yards. Impact Dev at a Compton. I think uh, we're, we're going to have to find that balance. But if we ever get into a game where it's not working out through the pass, a lot of confidence for him out of the backfield. Uh, Landon Bell, plus five. Was a 75 wide receiver up to an 80 now. 97 speed, 99 acceleration, 90 catching. Brown up to a 79, 8, 78. So a lot of growth and development here at wide receiver. And I would not expect any different. We are Cheeto Williams. We develop wide receivers. That's what we do. Look at that Malik Avant with that 99 speed, 98 acceleration. We're going to get creative with this depth chart. The best, ath honestly, in a lot of situations, the best athletes and the best depth traits are probably going to find their way on the field. Here for year number one. Offensive line, not great development there. Only plus one for the left tackle. Morley up to an 84. Hamilton 80. Right guard's not bad. Right. I mean, the old line's solid for you know where our program is at. Whitefield Powell at pass rush up to an 85 overall. And look at the traits. Obviously a little bit undersized at 220. But we got big time athleticism here from the two star. 85 finesse, 82 power, so he's balanced there. Maybe he could be a little stronger. An aware player, but 92 acceleration, 90 speed. That is a guy we're definitely going to need to rely on.
to get after the quarterback. No doubt about it. Lovelace at D-tackle. A freshman up to an 80. You'll love to see that. Linebacking core, we got 80, 78, 76, 75. Not great development here. But a lot of those linebackers pretty stagnant in their in their development. But uh, Jock, look, look at what a weird profile. 92 acceleration, only 76 speed. But generally across the board, maybe a slower linebacking core than what I like. So we'll keep that in mind. Maybe that will be a position that we prioritize a little bit of our hours on uh, for our first true recruiting class at the linebacker spot. In the secondary Decent development. Baker way down there. The, the elite dev. Could be pretty hard for him to get on the field, but I don't know, man. I almost feel like we got to throw him out there. Elite dev. You only get so many of those guys. We don't we don't want him not to play and transfer. That's another big potential worry there. Uh, free safety. We have uh, Jackson up to an 82, 81. I mean, a lot of depth there at strong safety. It's one of those ones I wish there was trades. I would trade one of those guys. Uh, in a hype beam, we're too deep at each kicker position. I mean, I'm going to be honest. Two and ten is kind of what we need to beat in our first year as a head coach. Like, I see this team can go 500. All right, so anytime I try to adjust the schedule, it keeps giving me uh, invalid, and we're going to revert back. So I'm at a point right now where whatever. Let's just rock and roll here. There's no Colorado. I want to schedule Colorado. I want to schedule Western Michigan. Obviously, Western Michigan, the team we chose not to take the head coaching job. But anytime I change any of these games, even the open ones, we're getting absolutely robbed. So I'm going to be honest. If we're taking on Texas Tech, I want that to be a home game. We'll go on the road to Indiana. We'll go on the road to West Virginia. I want that Vandy game to be a home game. Especially, like, anytime we can change. That's like a little personal tip and trick. Anytime you can control, especially, like, week three beyond... But you can make it home and away. Make it a home game because that just gives you that many more opportunities if you need to cash in a recruit visit. It's just a lot more opportunities there. Now it is time to build our first recruiting board. And I'm going to follow the same set of rules that we do in any of our college football rebuilds. The player has to have interest in our school for me to put them on our board. And because we have a very limited 500 hours, honestly, a lot, we're going to go with a lighter board, probably like to keep it under a dozen targets and we are going to try our best to shoot for three stars only and ideally three stars that are in the top 1000 and i will say we got a lot of three stars initial board we got 21 we're going to need to shave it down a little bit but we do have a four one to four george perkins 352 in the nation let's fully scout him here make sure that he's gonna be worth the time and investment and hey, at least he's not a bust He's going to be the crown jewel of our very first class. Guarantee it. Plus, local kit, Aurora. We're going to wait through our board. I was like, do I even offer a bust? Known bust. I was like, yeah, what? We're first on his team list, and we get an instant commit in our very first recruiting class. Cool. Cool. We got our hours set up for our recruiting stage. Luckily, we did get that instant commit. Our board is of 13 targets, 400 hours. It's been a minute since I've had that little. I'm a little worried that 13 is still a little much. And uh, if things start to go off the rails a little bit, uh, I think we will shave off a couple of the non-gem three stars that we need to be because I, I think if, at minimum, McClellan, three-star gem, Perkins, the four-star. We have Abel, the three-star gem, Peters at wide receiver, three-star gem, Tuttle at running back, the three-star gem. Those are really, you know, everyone else. If we lose them, it is what it is. The cost of doing business. Those are our top targets. So if we start to lose a little ground there, I might have to shave a couple players off this initial board. But it is time for our season opener, week zero. No, no matter how hard I tried to reschedule this one, uh, not an ideal first matchup, but a great measuring stick. And hey, if we can start this thing by upsetting the number 10 team in the nation... Hell of a way to start your uh, head coaching journey. I've actually looked at our jerseys. I know they got the greens. I know they got the whites. We have the AG Day. Wow, Colorado A&M. Aggies. I'm not going to lie. Those jerseys look pretty badass. State Pride alternates. Okay. Pretty, I mean, those are very much like home games. But cool jerseys. All right, stop making it bigger than what it is. All right? We're not expected to win this game. 
pretty much a setup to fail in our first ever game as a head coach going up against a top 10. It's But you know what? It's also the preseason rankings. How many times are the preseason rankings wrong? How many times do the preseason rankings overrate a team incredibly? Maybe that's the case here against Texas Tech. And you know what? We model our offense after the great Mike Leach, right? And after how things ended with Mike Leach and Tech, let's win this one for Mike Leach, the Pirate. As we said, defense, they've, they've stepped up. Two drives, two stops. Didn't give us great opening field position any of these times, but let's see if we can get our first. I think there's no better way to find out. The new quarterback can run. The overpowered play from West Kentucky. QB sneak. And he can run it. Look at the blocking. 34 into the second level. Damian Henderson, undeniable speed. One of the fastest guys on the field today. All right, not the best screen, but that, you know what? That was perfectly floated for a first down. So we got some wheels on the QB. Something we have yet to have as an offensive coordinator. Did not have any speed at quarterback at Western Kentucky. Another big time run. Keep going. Right on the slot. That's where we want to try to get this. There we go, baby. Shock the world. It's got to quiet the stadium up real quick. Let's go. First of many. The tight end. Oh, big grab. Time out. So Texas Tech goes down and scores. Defense, is, I mean, only seven going into half is outstanding against a top 10 team. But we're trying to get some points here. Oh my god. Get in there! Yes! I was thinking, get down, let's get down, time out, kick the field goal. Alright, settle on the Heisman pose. But what a drive. Less than a minute. 80 yards. And Colorado State's gonna go into halftime with a lead. And we get the ball to start the second half. Close. Bell, Henderson out the backfield. We got Bell. We got Bell! Get your block! Oh my god! The speed! We are definitely one of the fastest teams in the nation. Our running backs are one of the fastest running backs. We got two wide receivers, 95 plus. Bell's what, 99, 97, somewhere in that range. Let us let us get that yak. And look, the defense with another stop. Oh, well, we hold a little field goal. And they miss it. Oh my god, we are gonna do this. I, I can't see us. I'm not gonna put the ball in harm's way. We're going to get a... And I didn't even want this game! I wanted Colorado or Western Michigan. Like, no, you keep your top 10 opponent. All right. We'll play spoiler. Right, we'll just go in the middle of the field here, get another first down. Don't worry about it. Actually, just break some tackles. And we are... We are absolutely dominating on the road against a top 10 team, apparently. I don't see a top 10 team. All right, watch the shark. Watch the running back out the backfield here. Get a first down. I mean, well, fellas, we get this first down. I think there's a there's a lot of time that we can continue to burn off this clock. And you're gonna have him. You're gonna have him. He's on the slow linebacker. He's on a slow linebacker. Let's go, Henderson. As soon as I looked at this team, when I was deciding where to go, I was doing my own self scouting report. Above even the wide receivers, I said this running back has unique speed that you don't see a lot of t places. Across the country. What a weapon. And what a statement. Damian Henderson, the second. Soon as I saw he's going to get matched up against uh, linebacker number 41. We're taking that shot all damn day. Graham. The Cheeto Williams era at Colorado State is going on the road against preseason number 10 ranked Texas Tech. And doing it for Coach Leach. Love these guys. I mean, I already fall in love with this team. That is how you ball on a budget right there. 28-7 to seven from the core. I mean, defense outstanding. No control. Let the DC. We bring in a DC that's hands-on. We don't want anything to do with the defense. We'll do the offense. Defense, outstanding job. Offensively, four touchdowns, no picks. 
for Fowler and Nicolosi. And above all, maybe the most impressive was Damian Henderson. 88 yards out of the backfield. Also caught a 37-yard uh, a touchdown. One thing I will notice is I didn't love Bell and Brown, who are our go-tos. Yes, they got on the board. But I, I wasn't a huge fan of the routes that they were running. Not a lot of high percentage throws. Might need to change that, alter the game plan a little bit. Defensively, look what we got here. We got Gill with a sack, Nesbitt with a sack. No turnovers, but outstanding, complimentary, both sides of the football team effort. And the Mountain West Player of the Week in Week Zero goes to... I mean, we might get Player of the Week. Who had a better Week Zero than him? Right, they gave it to the Troy wide receiver, MJ Johnson, an upset win at Mizzou. 11 catches, 142 yards, two touchdowns. All right, I'll give you that one. Game two, we get Indiana. And looking at it by the numbers, we are the stronger team. I would like to think the momentum we gained against Texas Tech should be able to keep this thing rolling. They got a rock. Well, you know what Rams do to rocks. They run headfirst into it. Multiple concussions, but eventually they'll break that rock. And that's what we're going to do here today. I like it. I like it a lot. Diving Superman catch. First yard, first play of the game. 50 yards. Diving Superman catch. All right, watch the middle of the field here. Maybe Bell corner the end zone. If not, person. Yep. That's where I want you to go with it. Easy does it, man. Mar that's a seven is slow. They have a very slow corner room. Let's keep picking on it. Hell of a drive, kid. Oh, that's good blocking on the outside. Just so much speed. David Henderson. Oh, I don't like it. Protect yourself. Oh, God damn it. Come on, boys. That's sloppy. Fall on it! You. That's embarrassing. That is embarrassing on the road. Fall on it. We can still attempt a field goal. Salvage that drive. Three, you jump over the football. Luckily, the defense bails us out again. We got a vaunt in the game, right bumper, 99 speed. Do they know this? Have they read the scouting report? Come back to it, let's go, kid, that's a freshman. Heads up play by 38, that's a god ugly number two for a wideout. There we go, got the tight end across, I mean, that has been a money play. Oh no. What? Why is the quarterback leaving the game? He didn't even get hit there. All right, we're going to bring in Ivy. Biggest arm on the team, most mobility on the team, freshman quarterback. But what the hell happened to my starter? Well, I mean, we'll take that. Doesn't get much easier than that. Can we please get an update on the starter, please? Guess we'll have to wait to halftime. Oh, no, he's back in. He's back in. Just need to take a dump. Had stomach cramps. Oh, that's late. It's late. Throw it as he got it. I was kind of hoping the streak would go a little longer until we threw our first intercept. And he's hurt again. And he's running crooked. His wires are crossed. It's that damn rock. What is it with American schools and in, in in infatuation with a rock? What is the injury status of our quarterback? Bro broken collarbone. No. No, there's no way. Senior. This is his last year. Got the old Tony Romo. Broken collar. It's not good. Okay. What is good? College defense held to another field goal. But now we got to go to this game with a freshman quarterback. Even though we've hyped him up a little bit. He's no 87 overall. Best quarterback in the Mountain West. But when you got a running back that has this amount of speed. Makes things easier when you got a hurt quarterback. Let's go, man. Elite. Look the blocking. They just want it more. It's like Gene T. He's going to be our Gene T. Boise State is being carried by our running back. And especially if our quarter's going to be out long term, this is going to be the show. 
And as while we all wait the injury status of our starting quarterback, you still got to feel very good about where this program is at. 2-0 to start a new era, and a new superstar is emerging. Damian Henderson is the whole damn offense right now and might have to be for a long time. Yeah, that sucks, though. Quarterback was very good. That was a big decision. The big reason why we came here was they had a quarterback in place. And now with a broken collarbone, who knows how long he's going to be out for. And we get our second straight Mountain West Player of the Week going to Damian Henderson. 223 yards, two touchdowns. I'm going to be honest, that probably should also be National Player of the Week. And looking at it, nah, maybe not. Pretty good performance there by Eric Holly the third. At least he's not done for the year. Fowler and Nicolisi out for six weeks. 87 overall. Best quarterback in the conference. That sucks. So we're going to hand the reins to Zach Ivey, the 6'4", three-star recruit out of Arvada, Colorado. Local kid. Again, we've already hyped him up a little bit, even though there's not a lot of room for growth as a freshman. He's pretty much as good as he's going to get. Can get a, you, know, you know what? To be told, IQ and accuracy, that could definitely bring that rating up from 75 into the 80s. But, you know, could be a lot worse. Game three, and in terms of, like, name value, right, you look at our schedule, like, we might get ranked. If we can handle business here against West Virginia, Texas Tech, still ranked Indiana, like, Vandy is what it is. I mean, an SEC win would be nice. But I think if we handle business against West Virginia, especially the way our defense has been playing, and if we can endure the loss of our quarterback and get something going with Ivy, but more, most importantly, probably continue with the run game, I could definitely see us being ranked going into our week three bye. Three straight road games as well. And we finish with probably the most hostile environment of the three. Take them home. We'll put them on them country roads and we'll take them home. Actually, it was on a field goal. Okay. My apologies to the defense, but look at the way we are run blocking. David Henderson wants a trip to New York at the end of the season. Man, high percentage throws, especially when you're dealing with a 74 overall quarterback. Ah, didn't like that. Keep an eye on three. Egbule, Bell as well. If that safety doesn't go over top, he has enough speed to win out the line of scrimmage. But I'd look for right bumper here, Egbule. But you got him. Let's go. Tough catch. You get absolutely blasted. And we're going to give this on the one-yard line to the hottest running back in college football. What a drive. What the hell of a ball? What the hell of a throw, kid? Not a bad ball by a freshman quarterback. Speed wins on the outside, and the crowd is getting real quiet here. West Virginia. What a grab on the outside. What a ball. Chicken or the egg. Both in that equation. Great throw. Great grab. Zach Ivey. Ice in his veins. Gotta have it. 43 yards downfield. Corner was there as well. 37 on West Virginia. Oh, that's... You just... You wasted all the good faith you gained on that drive. Should have ran it. Should have took it out of his hands and just kept running it. Defense bails us out. We'll have a chance at a Hail Mary. That is very much a miss. I can't believe he threw that. Holy. Oh! <laughs> oh my god. Let's I we made the right call. This is the right school for me, my style of offense. Um, he's just, it's unbelievable. He's so good. One of the best running backs I've seen in this whole game. Keep it on the ground. He'll get it. Ah. Second turnover of the game. The defense has been bailing us out. And they do it again. But not only do they bail us out, they give us excellent field position. Let's go. 
Same play. Look in the middle of the field. Or, do should do that. What a ball. What a ball. And the defense suffocating. All right, there you go. Okay, they got a little bit. We need to uh, respond here. Put this game away, this drive. No turnovers. Keep it on the ground. Follow your blocks. Of course, it can't kill the game off. Defense makes this one get a little squeaky butt time. But we're able to finish this one out with the best formation in football as our three-game road trip to start the season. Probably our three toughest games all year, excluding Boise State. 3-0. We go in with a backup quarterback, a freshman, whose connection with sophomore Landon Bell. We've got five catches, 200 yards, three touchdowns. That's, that's going to be our third straight Mountain West offensive play. And that's what they get by bringing me in. They got the OC mastermind behind West Kentucky going on a playoff run. And we're paying immediate dividends. Bet you some of those other schools. Bet you Arizona State. Bet you TCU. Bet you Stanford wishes they offered us a job now. And as expected, Landon Bell, Mountain West Conference Player of the Week. And we go to our by 3 -0. No ranking. I wonder if we're getting any love. Like as like first out kind of deal. Like others oh, receiving votes. Do they do that still? No. How is Kentucky still? How are we not ranked over some of these teams? Like Texas Tech is... We beat the 19th team in the nation and we're undefeated. Okay. Looking at our conference, yet we've you know yet to play any conference opponents. Utah State, we do play undefeated. San Jose State, who we do play undefeated. But as it stands right now, best offense in the conference. Colorado State, best defense in the conference. We're in the discussion, especially for the amount of games that we've played. I think we're the best. I think I think I mean you look at the ratings. Even tough old Boise State, who are one and one, they've slipped up. They're ranked. We are the strongest team on paper as well this season. And our first home game of the season is against our only SEC competition of the season. Undefeated 3-0 Vandy. This could be tougher than expected, but it's our home opener. I feel confident. You better believe we're going to rock these classics. So what kind of pregame traditions we got? We're rocking these Aggies uniforms. AKA they look like just rip off hurricane uniforms. But I'm fine with that because they look pretty badass. Alright, try to go and try to get a chunk play here. If not, no sack. We'll go for it on fourth down. Oh, beautiful ball. He's in. Let's show the home fans what they already know. We got the best running back in the nation on the roster. Go defense, good stand. Watch that safety, Brown. Brown got speed. Mulligan. It's a mulligan. Forget it. Forget it ever happened. Defense holds him to a field goal off of the safety. I mean, just outstanding effort from our defense. I think we got to make it count. At this rate, our DC is going to be gone getting a head coaching job next year. I get it. You want to go to the running back. You can't predetermine that. You can't just decide you're going to the run. He's the last option on that play call. Oh my god. He's rattled. He is rattled. Alright, just gotta run it. Oh my god. Do we need you? Do we ever need you? He's gone. I don't know if we're gonna have to, I don't I don't I don't think in a good conscience we can throw this football for the remainder of this game. I think we keep feeding three four. Alright, mesh spot. Tuck and run. If it's not there. You got legs. You can scramble. Running back. He can do it all. He can run it better than anybody in the nation. He can catch it out of the backfield better than anybody in the nation. Let's go defense. Another stop. Okay. 
Tied up at 21. I mean, our defense, out, playing out of their mind, only gives up field goals. All right, we got two clock on. Again, we'll look for the running back out the backfield. We'll go with the seam. Also, you got Bell and Brown. Look at Bell. Brown got a good corner on him. Ah, too late. You had him. If you throw it in anticipation, this is going to fall on the defense. Can they get us a stop force overtime? Give us a chance for a final throw. And we lose our home opener. Too many mistakes on offense. Should have fed the running back more. Does still get player of the game, but... <sighs> Damn it. You know, you can bounce back after a loss like that. Another home opportunity against an undefeated conference opponent. Utah State 5-0, 3-0 in the Mountain West. Hey, hell of an opportunity to bounce back. Oh, great blah. Hey, there you go. Chef's kiss. Take a shot at Bell. Undeniable speed. Here we go. Get that passing game going. Get some confidence. Come on. Getting a little too pass happy. I love doing it all. Go as much as the next guy, but it's not sustainable. Especially undefeated Utah State. Huge conference win up for grabs. And just not enough time. We had the tight end. O line couldn't hold up. The defense gives up the first touchdown in a minute. Second to go with the backup Dupree in. Don't matter. Runs him over. Runs over two. And that should be the dagger. First loss on Utah State's record belongs to Colorado State. And it might not have been the first pretty of performances, but efficient football, 21-14, and we get a nice Mountain West win over an undefeated opponent. Player of the game, probably the running back. It is Damian Harrison, 100 yards on the dot with a tutty. Now, this is bizarre. We're not getting the pop-ups for our commits because we got George Perkins, the four-star committed. What? Why am I not getting these? We got Tuttle, who's a top 500 recruit, gem running back. We got Peters, who's a gem top 1,000 recruit. We were able to get Blizzard, top 1,000 linebacker, but a three-star, which we need some TLC at the linebacking core. And we got 200 hours now to kind of finish out this board on all these players, which outside of Wade, who I think we could probably gain that ground up with the added hours, we should be able to get 13 of 13 here for our first recruiting class. And I'll remember by, we get another, probably the top guy left on our board, Derek McClellan, the three-star. 597 in the nation. Jim Pass Rusher signs on. So the recruiting on the bye week was outstanding. We're very happy where the recruiting's at. And out of the bye, we got 3-3 three three New Mexico. Who, you know, 3-3, three three, nothing special. But they are undefeated in the conference. And our big wins, our big three to kind of start things out, have no impact over the conference as they were out of conference wins. So we were able to handle business against Utah State, which is a quality win. But we need to start stacking these conference wins, especially before we take on Boise State, which is going to be a very, very difficult game. And for what it's worth, New Mexico is first in the Mountain West off of their 2-0 start in conference play. However, for us, good news is we get Fowler Nicolosi back next week. The bad news is our second highest rated player on the defensive side of the ball, Whitefield Powell, is done for the year with a fractured kneecap. Brutal injury. I mean, Ivy knows this is his last chance to impress as a starter. He's going back to the bench, and I get he wants to make some plays. Just don't hurt the team. You're hurting the team. And like we've seen time and time again, off the interception, defense goes, all right, we'll, we'll, we'll hook you up. Holds into a field goal, New Mexico. Damn it. running back defense is legit we'll go all go here might be four down territory wouldn't hate it 
And a Vaunt 99. Oh, that could be what we needed. True freshman, Avant, one of the fastest players, S tier high school track speed, translating as a freshman on the field for Colorado State. What a bounce back throw from Ivy. Third and six in points range. You know we want to try to get more. All right, first time kicking a field goal all year. Let's see how this goes. All right. Got a Oh, beautiful on the play action. And there is no tackle angle from six. Let's go, man. Let Ivy show out here in his final start of the year. Hopefully. All right, watch Bell top of the screen. Get him involved. Running back of the backfield. Oh, my God. Terrible tackling on the last two touchdowns. Ah, I get it. Trying to make a play. Unnecessary. Luckily, defense. Probably the best bailout defense in the nation. 21-3. And we should be getting our starting quarterback next week. And we only lost one game in his absence. That's huge. And of course, what else is new? Player of the game, Damian Henderson. Show me a better running back in all college football. I'll show you a liar. Update on recruiting because for a reason we're still not getting the pop-ups. We got four more to fall in. However, we do lose out on Jalen Raddy. That's a tough one. He's stylistically the type of receiver we like to get. 6'3", 94 speed, 93 acceleration. It's a tough loss, but you can't get everybody. And the fact that we're in great position, we only lost one. Of our initial board, we should be able to get Muhammad, top 1,000 player, and Nunez at quarterback. He's likely going to be a backup. So it's not a big deal because Ivy, as a freshman, is our long-term quarterback. But, uh, I mean, hell. Hell of a job here. We got a top 500 player in Glenn. Almost top 500 player in Wade. Love it. The week 8, we have the unnamed rivalry matchup between Colorado State and Air Force, which you always want to win those, especially the unnamed ones. The big story is Fowler Nicolisi, the 88 overall quarterback, is back under center. Appreciate everything Ivy did. And if that's the future of our quarterback position, even though we know there's not a lot in terms of skill cap and room of growth, you can still win a lot with them. Had a lot of great tools, but Nicolisi is a different beast. All right, another clear passing situation on this drive. Third and nine. Too fast. Late, too late. Punt. Damn. Knowing our defense, that's probably a field goal. Ah, Air Force gets the touchdown. Damn. Damn it, man. O line struggling. Not enough juice on that one. Third and 17. Probably need at least five yards to even attempt a field goal to try to tie this up. Who needs to try to tie it? Well, you can just send it. Oh, brutal drop. No. Oh. Very lucky that wasn't. I mean, again, we get too comfortable with the short throws that we're working with Western Kentucky. This is still a team that's learning the playbook. Third and ten. Can we get the running back? And just can't get any blocking. That is another punt. We get a safety. Just incredible defense. Absolutely incredible. Terrible offense. And the defense forces a fumble the next play. And um, it's just... I'm the guy, I pat my... I, you know, when the defense sucks, I'd have to say I hired the wrong guy. When the defense is great, it wasn't even like the OC where we got our second choice. I picked first ballot on the head DC vacancy. We got him, and he is getting a head coach job. Guarantee. Oh, free throw. Oh, there we go. Move the chains. It's Bell, our best receiver. Wide open. He'll take that every day. Oh, got it. 
Let's go, baby. Defense. Oh, look at that. Sack. Game ending sack. That was spicy. That was not pretty. Not my favorite game, but a rivalry win from the unnamed rivalry. First game back for the quarterback off an injury. There's got to be some rust. And the battle for the Ram Falcon goes to the Rams. Player of the game, I'm going to guess Henderson. It is. Quick update back on the recruiting trail. Nunez and Muhammad from our initial class are still, you know, taking their time. But we're going in and dipping back in for a second wave to see what we can add in. We got a three-star gem at safety in Okine, a three-star gem at corner in Keenan Body, and we're going to try to land two more three-stars on the offensive side of the ball. I think in a lot of these cases, look, we got against Colorado, Colorado, Tulsa, but those two Colorado ones, man, that'd be a, quite a big shift if we could start to poach players from Coach Prime. And as far as on-field talent, roster versus roster, this is easily the toughest remaining game on the schedule. Season hasn't gone the way Boise State wants it to. But when you look at the ratings, you look at the roster, we are dogs in this one. We got to play our best football. What we did against Air Force is not going to cut it this week against Boise State. But let's wear our state pride jerseys, too. Let's show some pride. So I almost also wanted those white unis to stand out on the blue field. Luckily, there's no more Ashton GT here, but I imagine they got a just usually have a pretty good pipeline of running backs. I'm going to assume they still have Malachi Nelson, who's a five star recruit. Go. Quick cheesy throw across the middle. Get into Broncos territory. Oh, let's go. Home run! They might not have asked to GT, but we got the closest thing the Mountain West has seen since. Let them know. And let's see what the defense can do. Opening drive. They do what they've done all year long. Force a punt. Zero points. Suffocating. All right, third nine to start up the second quarter. Defense has done a great job. It's our turn to carry a little bit of the weight. I like Henderson at the backfield here. Matched against their linebackers. It's not there. Again, got to get out of this habit of making my first read the freaking check down running back. Brutal. Brutal execution, man. Our defense has been playing their minds out. And we have not been able to reward them with points the other way. Got to be able to control the line of scrimmage. That's been our bread and butter all year. Now we got Bell and Brown. Both got speed, big time speed. Boise also has speed at corner. And our O-line's just not even giving us a chance to hit those deep balls today. Here we go. And the defense gives up the first points of the game. Was it a field goal? Was it a touchdown? And we are tied at seven. Let's get a response here. Yeah, go to the running back. He is the weapon. With a slam with person, the shot to Bell. Stumble by the corner. It is up. And down on the one. Great ball, great read. Scanning the field and seeing the slip by the Boise State DB. We bring in a knot. Our main running back. But it is fine because we have more than enough power and determination to get one yard and they get the lead back. All right, I think that was a field goal. Which is, it means we could kill this game off with a long drive, let's go. Take the crowd completely out of it. Fellas, let's give it to the best player in the nation, in my opinion, biasly. Damn, it's a hell of a play. Boise State's defense gives their offense a chance against maybe the best defense of the nation. Field goal? Touchdown? Okay. No pressure. More free yards. We'll take it. We're at least in long field goal range. Go, 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 go. kidding me it's one of those you know 
He's got goodwill for how well he's played this year, Henderson. That we're not gonna throw him under the bus for the fumble there, but what an ugly L, second L of the year. There goes. I mean, we 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 look past him. Let's be honest. We knew that they were good. We knew they had a better roster. But we're like, oh, we get this win, we'll probably be ranked. And God damn it! You know what? This is where we handle our business. We handle our business. Maybe we'll see him again. Get that revenge. We get a rivalry matchup here against 5-4 and four Wyoming. The battle of the bronze boot. Truth be told, Wyoming's another really well-built roster. They actually have an advantage offensively over us. Got him. He has a step. He has a step. And more. And it is Brown on the shot play. Opening drive. That is the spark our passing offense has been missing. I think we need to consider, too is Henderson, the wear and tear system, man. Henderson has had a lot of carries. So transitioning a little bit to being a balanced offense, maybe even slightly pass-heavy to close this season out, uh, is probably going to be best for the running back, especially, you know, we feel pretty confident here that we will feature in a bowl game. Oh, that's a ball and a half. Great grab to the one. See, we get Henderson some pay dirt. Even if, even if we just, you know, we he, we 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 let him vulture some touchdowns like this, but it's we're getting between the twenties through the air. That's the kind of balance I think I want to see over the next couple weeks. Got him. Let's go. Rivalry game, huh? Yeah, you know, hey, it's a rivalry game. You're trying to pad your stats, trying to get the passing offense going. Unnecessary risk. But with the way the defense is played, we'll get interception right back and go 2-0 in our rivalry games this year. Got the passing offense going this week. I am a little worried, though, about the wear and tear on the running back. He is starting to slow down. So that's something we always get to be a little conscientious of. But the border war goes to Colorado State. And I'm going to guess the quarterback will get player of the game when he does. Week 11, we got another big game in the Mountain West against the 6-3, and 4-2 and two in conference San Jose State Spartans. We're on a two-game win streak, and this, I mean, maybe regardless of what UNLV do, this could be for first place in the conference. Third and 10, opening drive. Don't want to stall out. Go from, ah, uh, it's a punt to, oh, deep threat. That's what you want to see. And we got a step. Oh, and a whole lot more. The best deep threat in the conference. Shows up time and time again. Do it again. <laughs> oh, just get the run game going too. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. San Jose State scores of points on our insane defense. Don't worry about it. Oh, we had Bell again. Big hit. David Randall on the sack. And you know what? San Jose State, fair to say, has given our defense the biggest challenge all year long. It was like anytime we score, they're scoring. They're keeping pace. But at the end of the day, this is going to be a track meet. You do not want to go against the fastest team in the conference. Got him. Let's see. Why not? If this is, if this is the matchup we're going to get all day... Let's pat our guys' stats. That's, that's a needed win right there. Dominating. 49-21 over maybe our last big hurdle of conference play in a solid San Jose State team. But finally able to kind of let the reins off. And look at that. 253, four touchdowns for the sophomore Landon Bell. That Landon Bell, clearly the Mountain West Player of the Week, probably should be nationally... Why have we not got one national? I would love a little bit of an extra exposure for the program as we follow up week 12 with a, I don't want to call it a trap game, but got to see this one out against 3-7 and seven San Diego State. Back to the recruiting class. We just got another one of our gems in Okine. Top 1,000 player, the safety out of Dallas, Texas. And then when I looked at why we didn't get player, like what is that stat line? Three catches, 214 yards and three touchdowns. Two carries for 80. 
This guy had five snaps. At 290 yards, four touchdowns. What? How did Greg Schiano recruit here? KJ Duff, 6'5, 207, three star impact. I mean, I'll say for, for how youthful he is 93 medium, 92 short, 84 catching, 94 agility. I mean, yeah, hell of a weapon. Jesus, that is an all time type performance. But look at that. There's a little number next to us number 24. In the nation, the 8-2 Colorado State Rams. That is very nice. I mean, I don't know how much ground we're going to gain beating a three-win program, but it's probably more so the teams ahead of us, like Duke. They got Clemson. That could be an L. You know, Nebraska up there against Oregon could be an L. Oklahoma against Georgia could be an L. Miami against, you know, all these teams that are within an earshot of us. I think this would be a week that it's not so much who we play, it's about L's taken by other teams that can improve our spot here in the rankings. Or we just take the underneath throw, see what we can get. That might just set this up for a run. Inside zone to one of the best running backs in the nation. Even though he hasn't been at his focal point, that's because we got the quarterback back healthy. He's damn good. Would love to see him get some hardware this offseason. Oh my god, we got Bell. Oh, you can't make it that easy. Oh, that's gonna jump. Oh, that's terrible. I was so much good operating the air raid until that throw between last week and this game. We were due to have a a wet fart mulligan though, and that was it. Unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Can't have that turnover. Incredibly sloppy. You can't just... Luckily, the defense wakes up a little bit. You can't have the sack fumble floated into a DL's hands. What a gutsy throw. That's what... <laughs> right on the linebacker. That was an awesome mismatch. Great read by the quarterback. Great play call. Wow, what? Hmm. I think we go for this. Field goal doesn't make that much of a difference. I think we can get them with a mesh. Henderson even out the backfield potentially. Oh, we got a bow. Go right that bell. And we just had a little too much explosiveness. Consistent. Touchdown every quarter. And if you do that every week, you're at least going to avoid trap game losses. That's exactly what we're able to do here on the road. Landon Bell having another day. And as expected with that win, we go from 24th to 23rd. The quality of wins that we are you know, potentially in line for, I don't think are going to be gigantic needle movers. But we can close things out here against Fresno State. Lock in a title. You never know where the poles will go. There we go. We got Brown out in space. See him maybe fight a little bit to get in there, but that's going to set up ideally a nice little. That's a soft spot. This is going to be a touchdown. Add another. Yeah, they got some guys up there. We are at a severe injury risk for Henderson. Not good. Need everyone else to step up. There we go, Lincoln. Get white lightning in there. Good grab, fourth and inches. You without Henderson. I like I like our line. I like our line to get a push here. White lightning, can he do it again? Oh, look at the pancakes. We are taking the crowd out of it here at Jim Sweeney Field. There you go, Fresno State able to respond and get a touchdown of their own. This is when you go, okay. Send it out. That's a brutal drop. They also got speed. Not a lot of these Mountain West teams. That's been the biggest difference, obviously. Speed is killed. It's been a buzzword, but it's been true. That has been the difference, I think, between us and everyone else. Is that when we need a play, we have the athletes that can go out and just make a play out of nothing. And other teams don't have that. Other teams don't have defense that can stop that. 
That's a thousand yards for Bell on the year. Oh, wow. Lazy throw. Man, the amount of just lazy over the middle throws. Definitely the biggest issue with our offense right now. Defense bail us out. Damn it. Hopefully that's a field goal, not a touchdown. Let's start with the run. And it is a touchdown, so we are tied up at 21 apiece. Late in the third quarter. We get a fresh running back. He has not been playing a lot today. So maybe we can ride on him here in the second half. Just to get these Fresno State defense to buy into our play action game. Block. Oh, person. He's not a human. He's a person. It's a little late, but he stays in fight for it. Stays in bounds. Jamari Person. He stepped up here today, man. Uh, full credit to Fresno State outside of the occasional shot to Bell. Our top two wide receivers have been locked down. Are we able to find other ways to win? And who else? But Henderson punches that in. Lead black with Colorado State, and the defense gets a stop. And this is terrible. This is terrible. Bring out the kicker. 41-yard field goal. That should be good. How is that not good? I hate this. We still got all of our timeouts. I don't think we should be running this. I think we should be taking shots. We're going to take our shots downfield. Try to win this in regulation. What are these play calls? These aren't my play calls. Why? Who's getting into this headset? I must be famous. Who wants to make money? Got him. Got up. Yes. The best one-two connection in the Mountain West. It's not even climatic anymore. That is expected. From those two, 35-28, we avoid the trap game loss against Fresno State. Landon Bell, the hottest wide receiver in college. That is an outstanding finish. I said we'd play him again. Chance to avenge our loss against Boise State. We've jumped, barely moving the needle, 19th. But you figure a Mountain West championship could be a couple spots. Here we go, revenge time against the 8-4 Boise State Broncos who beat us earlier in the year. And I'm going to be honest with you. It was kind of my expectation. I didn't think we'd get ranked. And let's be honest, if we look too far beyond Boise State, L here will probably knock us out of a ranked spot. But I did think we'd have a very good record. I wanted above 500. But I think overall, with the roster that we had, the talent that we had, the fact that we had the top quarterback in Mountain West, I'm, I was almost kind of expecting at least an appearance in the Mountain West Championship. Let's go on and win it. Almost going to entertain the question, too. We win this. Are we one and done at Colorado? I mean, I think we got to at least hear out the open market. I, I think we're building something here. I think if we get a lot of these underclassmen to return, that's going to play a part. But, you know. You know, I'll say the, one of the biggest reasons why I think I might be one and done if a big offer comes in. It's because those 400 hours are a pain in the ass that I don't really want to deal with. And my school rankings, even though we are winning, we are barely seeing... I mean, and it's expected. This is a grind. But we are barely seeing these move up. So it is that much harder for recruiting when you want to try to hard sell and it's, nothing's there. And that is the challenge of being a smaller school. But it is a challenge that if I can get the on-field and pivot to a head coaching job that's going to make recruiting easier... You'd be foolish not to at least entertain that idea. But first things first, we're already looking beyond Boise State. So we know what usually happens in that case. But and we lost to them earlier. So let's see if we can avenge that loss. Get 11 wins. Proving the polls. How? Put our hat into the, in the line of potential outside teams to make the college football playoff. But first and foremost, year one, win the conference title. When we look at the rankings, Boise State, man, that is a... I'll be honest, if Boise State offers us a head coaching job, I would consider it. That is a very good team. And it is a snow game. My favorite team that can run the football better, and I like our chances. Let's go, fellas. This is what Colorado football is all about. 
Oh, nice screen pass to the backup. Go Brown, love it. Right on the middle of the field. They don't got Leighton Vader Esch back there. Got another one. Right on the middle. Get the blocks. A little bit better. And Bell's in for the touchdown. Oh, what a drive. Keep it going. I don't like it. Just eat it. Go for it. Would love to be able to run it in this spot, but we've had no luck controlling the line of scrimmage. Got him. Drop. Drop. I mean, it's it's always going to be tough throwing the football today. That's a drop. Defense, look at that. Oh, that is outstanding opening field position. Turnover. We got Person who stepped up last week and he is in. First touchdown in the Mountain West Championship goes to Colorado State. I think Boise just equalized. And they did. All right. Damn. Didn't like it. I'm not going to lie. They're white jerseys. I'm an old man. They're white jerseys. With the snow, it's been an issue I've always had. It's not hard to see, but it's harder. Contrast ain't there. That's late. Over the middle. Lazy throw. Can't do that, man. Final play of the first half. Bad turnover. You can get it all back here on one play. A money play. Athlete versus athletes. Fuck it and chuck it offense, baby. Again, they don't want to race. They don't want to race. They don't want to race. They want to control the line of scrimmage. Make it a race. At the sticks. Oh, what a grab by the tight end. A little bit behind him, too. Logan Clifford. There we go. Bell's back in the game. Top of your screen. He wins. No! Oh, fuck's sakes. Tackle him. Oh, Jesus Christ. No way. Come on. Come on. Make them earn it. At least get our defense a chance. Just prevent them. They've been able to bail us out time and time again all year. Even just a field goal. Home to a field goal. Not a touchdown. Man, it's one of those things. If Bell wasn't in the game, there they get the touchdown. If Bell wasn't in the game, we probably don't even force that. And we still have the ball offensively. God damn it. And then I'm just going to like, oh, I'll do it again. I'll do it again. I live by the sword, die by the sword. I don't know what just happened there. Defense did a decent. I'm assuming we're going to have to tie it up. We missed an extra point. Are you kidding me? No, god damn it. Go back to that. Eh, bread and butter. Fuck it and chuck it offense. Live and die by it. You got Brown and Bell on the outside. Tight end in the middle. Oh my god. Not enough air underneath it. Here we go. Season comes down. I mean, we, no, we don't. We don't have enough timeouts. Season comes down. I mean, at this point, it's almost close our eyes and throw it to Bell. If it doesn't work, it's the first time all year we haven't been able to get that in the clutch. Put the running back in pass, pro. Come on, baby. One play. Safety bails. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Let's go. Time out. We have no more timeouts. We have got, we got, I don't know, a couple plays to get this in. Bell, what a goddamn play. Come on. Oh, we're so slow. No, I don't. Stick, I guess. Gotta try to get this in the air. I still don't trust our field goal kicker, if I'm being honest with you. Get in! Let's go to the tight end! Team of Destiny, Colorado State. Missed extra point. Had us worried. And then we go back to the Cheeto Williams.
patent it, fuck it, and chuck it offense. And what, I mean, who else? Who else? Landon Bell, six for 276, two touchdowns, and it's out of our control now. Where we end up playing in the postseason. Is it the playoffs? Is it a juicy bowl game? We control what we can control, and that is finishing our first year here in Colorado State as Mountain West champions. That looks good on the resume. I, I don't want to view this, and this is not going to be something where we just hop from team to team to team like Lane Kiffin did, you know? Definitely want to set some roots somewhere, but you never know, especially with how things have played out, you know? Got a pretty good resume this year. Hell yeah. Really? We go to 17th? We gotta, we gotta, I mean, if we made the bowl with Western Kentucky, like, we gotta be here. I, like, yeah, there we go. That's what I thought. I didn't go, you know, Ohio State, awesome. Gunnar Stockton of Georgia wins the Heisman, even though I, I think we would look at Henderson out of the backfield. <sighs> Let's go shock the world. Become top five in coach of the year. So remember that when it comes time for the hiring cycle. For what it's worth, Henderson top three for running back of the year. And we have something here. But I think we we play this first game before we even click it. Colorado State, 17th in the nation, 11-2 Mountain West champions against the one-loss Ohio State Buckeyes. Get the guy doing the can, can, can you do the can, can? No way, we're losing to that. The guy's hat. What does he think he is? Why is my team all cold? I would disagree. We're actually a very hot team, okay? Third and nine and out. See, look, this is this is where you run into the problem. We got good speed for the Mountain West. I don't think we have the best speed. It's a blue chip program. God damn it, man. We can't even... Can't even let the play set themselves up. Gigantic disadvantage at the line of scrimmage. Come on, let's get a first and there's just no jams. There's nothing. It's just... Can't, can't even, I mean, yeah, it's just one of the days, I guess, you know? Oh. We got a Vaughn on the other side. That's 99 speed freshman. Finally, hey, we got something. We leave it here with something. You know? Whatever. Go down swinging. But that's why you always want to look at the job market. Because we're probably year one already at our ceiling as a program. Julian saying five touchdowns. We finished the season 11 and 3. Looking at our stats, what we've been able to accomplish. Obviously, six week injury to our quarterback. And the fact that he's leaning towards the transfer portal. I mean, we do have a quarterback that we do like in Zach Ivey. Limited ceiling. But maybe that plays a part into what we're, we're going to finish this video up with. Because he's gone, that is going to be a step back. There's no, there's no other way to put it. That is going to be a step back. Um, Henderson, great. 1,200 yards, 13 touchdowns, a top five running back in the nation, which is impressive from our air raid. Bell, outstanding. 38 catches, 1,400 yards, 17 touchdowns, average 100 a game, 36 a catch. The effort and chuck it offense was on full display. Brown was solid as well, five and five. Henderson, just a complete weapon. Led the team in receptions. Another 373 yards, three touchdowns. So 16 on the air uh, and uh, 1,500 yards. Pretty good. Defensively, I'm not going to hold that last one against so That was a tough matchup. Surprising though with the numbers. I, I felt like our defense was elite. We kept teams out of the end zone. Not a lot of yards, but also not really a prolific pass rusher. Sucks that our top pass rusher played one game. And then miss the rest of the year in Powell. You know, you can only imagine what he would have done on a full season. Interception numbers, not the best either. And it is what it is. But Henderson does finish as a first-team All-American. 
Ran it up a little bit here in the Mountain West. Henderson, I'm surprised. Actually, I'm not going to say surprised. We missed time. Nelson's a 94, but thought our quarterback had a shot. But Henderson, Landon Bell, first team, Mountain West. Surprised we got nothing on the defensive side. We didn't even get the second best quarterback. We got Martin at tackle, Hamilton at center. Uh, Powell, they just gave him second team, I guess, is like an honorable mention. Sorry for, you know, ruining your, your season with a knee injury. Uh, Zach Ivey gets freshman at the quarterback spot. Lovelace at D tackle. Again, proud of this season. But here's the big question. And this this might not be anything. And maybe next episode we, we go with the idea that we're staying at Colorado State and maybe week two, three, four of the bowl season. Something else opens up. But I have a, uh, an outstanding season for Colorado State where I feel like we're at our ceiling. The initial job offers are as follow. What? DC at school's Wisconsin head coach job. Air raid offense. I mean, look at what else is. In case we want to like sit and wait. At this point, we're not going for an OC job. Even though I got OC at like Florida. Wouldn't do it. But head coach openings. We got Houston, which I would be open to. Iowa, I'd be open to. Louisville, I'd be open to. Kansas, I'd be open to. Ole Miss, if that came around. TCU, Texas. UC, I mean, I'd go UCLA. Washington is there. But as it stands right now, Wisconsin Badgers. What's that roster look like? So knowing that our quarterback is as good as gone in the transfer portal. What do we have? What are we inheriting? Looking at what we got. Mabry Mature. John Kenyon. Quarterbacks with some cannons. Okay. Run game always been strong in there. Nate White coming off an injury junior. Got Isaac Beard. Maybe not. I'm going to be honest. Not as good as I thought. We got the fullback because of course they do. At wide receiver. They got some speed. Kekahuna. Love seeing that. Big time athlete. The junior senior will be losing out on Quincy Burroughs. They got Harita at wide receiver. Freshman with 96 speed. You got Pierce, the freshman, with 99 speed, 98 acceleration. Another 99 speed freshman named Donald Darling. Like what I'm seeing there. Tight end is what it is. O-line outstanding, as always. Pretty much every... You take every one of these guys just at the left tackle. That would be an upgrade over our current offensive line. Senior, okay, we're good there. Interior, a little weaker. But we're outstanding at tackle defensively. Got Will McDonald. That's a, look at this guy. 6'6", 264, with 87 speed, 89 acceleration. Generational athlete. Sophomore. We've got a freshman, Landon Rivero, starting on the other side. Another sophomore. So a young defense. Look at that. 86 freshman, 89 sophomore. 86 sophomore. I mean, this is reminding me of college. It's just an upgraded version over Colorado State. I'm looking at the rosters. And this is a defense. Look at that. 6'6", 250 pass rusher. Another one. Secondary, we got a freshman as the second best corner, Ricky Poland. Got another freshman, 80 plus, Mario Silvestro. A couple white lightning, a couple Cooper DeGene fans at corner. Sophomore starting safety. I mean, again, there's a chance. We don't know what the optics are of that organization. There could be players leaving in the portal. But I have no plans of constantly one hopping. From program to program to program to program. But this is why you take the small school jobs to hopefully go to a place that you can really establish yourself. Four and eight Wisconsin. That is a team that is being misused with how much talent. I can get four and eight. I can get eight and four minimum out of this roster. I think we strongly need to consider this. I don't want to make a habit. Just one and done, one and done, one and done. But this year was better than expected. We're going to be losing our starting quarterback because we just don't have the facilities to keep the talent that we develop here in-house. So, yeah, I think the offensive coordinator of a Western Kentucky team that made the college football playoff, who then in one year at Colorado State, scared off Coach Prime, had the best team in the state, won the Mountain West, missed our starting quarterback for half the season, and still went to a college football play. I could totally see a team like Wisconsin and their boosters saying, let's get this guy. Exciting offense. 
We have the pieces. We have the defense. He doesn't need to worry about that. We have the facilities, so he's going to recruit. We have the O-line. Dominate the trenches. It's a pretty good offer, fellas. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Well, that will do it for here, here today in episode three of our College Football 25 Coaching Dynasty. This is my favorite thing to play, my favorite thing to record, so I hope you guys keep on enjoying it. Uh, if it is your first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. We're getting very close to 175,000 subscribers on the channel. If it is your first time stopping by, all I ask for in return, hit that like button. Leave a comment about what you think we should do with our coaching journey. Both those things help out the channel with the YouTube robots in terms of visibility, which is huge for the channel. That's all I ask for in return. Until next time, it's your boy C4 saying peace out. Love you. Have a good one.